we've already learned that cellular respiration can be broken down into roughly three phases. Cellular respiration broke down into three phases. The first is glycolysis. Glycolysis, which literally means the breaking down of glucose. Breaking down of glucose. And then this this can occur with or without oxygen. If we don't have oxygen, then we go over to fermentation. We'll talk that, about that in the future. Go over to fermentation. In, in humans, it produces lactic acid. In, in other types of organisms, it might produce alcohol or ethanol. But if we have oxygen, and for the most part, we're going to assume that we can proceed forward with oxygen. If there is oxygen, then we could proceed forward to the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle, sometimes called the citric acid cycle because it uh, it deals with citric acid, the same thing that's in orange juice or, or lemons. And then from there, we proceed to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain. And we learned in the first overview video of cellular respiration that this is where the bulk of the ATP is actually produced, although it uses raw materials that came out of these phases up here. Now what I want to do in this video is just focus on glycolysis. Just focus on glycolysis. And this is kind of a, you know, it, it's, it's sometimes a challenging task because you can really get stuck in the weeds. And I'll show you the weeds in a little bit and the actual mechanism, and it can be very daunting. But what I want to do is simplify it for you so you can kind of have the big takeaways and then we can appreciate. And then maybe when we look at the, the weeds of glycolysis, we can, we can make a little bit more sense of it. So glycolysis, or really cellular respiration, it starts off with glucose. It starts off with glucose. And glucose, we know its formula. It's C6H12O6. And you know, I could draw its whole structure. It would take a little time. But I'm just going to focus on the carbon backbone. So we could, you know, it, could, it is a ring, or it can be a ring. But I'm just going to draw it as six carbons, six carbons in a row. Now, there's two kind of important phases of glycolysis that are good to know. One I call the investment phase. And the investment stage phase actually uses two ATPs. So use two, it actually uses two ATPs. So you know, the whole purpose of cellular respiration was to generate ATPs, but right from the get-go, I actually have to use two ATPs. But I use two ATPs, and I'm, then I'm, I'm going to essentially break up the glucose into two three-carbon, into th two three-carbon compounds right here that actually also have a phosphate group on them. The phosphate groups are coming from those ATPs. They also have a phosphate group on them. This is often called, well, there's a lot of names for it. I'll, you know, sometimes called P-gal. You really don't have to know this. Or phospho, phospho-glyceraldehyde. Really challenging my spelling skills right here. That's not that important to know. All you have to know is in this first phase, you use two ATPs. That's why I call it the investment phase. If we use a business analogy, investment investment phase. And then each of these two P-gal molecules can then go into the payoff phase. So in the payoff phase, in the payoff phase, each of these P-gals turn into pyruvate, which is another 3 carbon and but it's it's reconfigured, but the process of it going to pyruvate, and let me write pyruvate in in blue cuz this is something that at least it's good to know the word. And I'll show you its structure in a second. Pyruvate, sometimes it's called pyruvic acid. Same thing, pyruvic acid. And that's essentially the end product of glycolysis. So you start off with glucose in the investment phase. You end up in this phosphoglyceraldehyde, which essentially you broke up your glucose and you put a phosphate on either end of it. And then those each independently go through the payoff phase. So you end up with two molecules of pyruvate for every molecule of glucose you started off with. Now you're saying, hey, so that was a payoff phase. What did what was our payoff? Well our payoff we got for each of for from this let me write this down as a payoff phase. This is our payoff payoff phase. And I apologize for the white background. I did it because I, the mechanism I'm showing you I copy and pasted it from Wikipedia and they had a white background so I just ran with the white background for this video. But I personally at least like the back black background a lot better. But this is the payoff 
phase right here. And so when we go from the phosphoglyceraldehyde to the pyruvate or the pyruvic acid, we produce two things, or I guess we could say we could produce three things. We produce each of these, each of these p-gals to pyruvates produce two ATPs. Two ATPs, so I'm going to produce two ATPs there. I'm going to produce two ATPs there. And then they each produce an NADH. N-A-D-H. May I do it in a darker color? N-A-D-H. N-A-D-H. And of course, they're not producing, you know, they're not producing the whole molecule in a vacuum. Essentially what they're doing is they they're starting with the raw material of an NAD plus. So they start off with an NAD plus, and they essentially they essentially reduce it by adding a hydrogen. Remember, we learned a couple of videos ago that you can view reduction as a gain in hydrogen. So the NAD gets reduced to NADH, and then later on, these NADHs are used in the electron transport chain to actually produce ATPs. So the big takeaway here, if I were to kind of write the, the reaction that we get for, for glycolysis, is that you start off with the glucose. You start off with the glucose. And you need some NAD plus, NAD plus. And actually, for every mole of glucose, you're going to need two NAD pluses. You're going to need two ATPs. You're going to need two ATPs. So I'm just writing all the ingredients that we need to start off with. And then you're going to need, well, let me say, well, these guys are going to be ADPs before we turn them to ADPs. So I'll write plus four ADPs. And then after performing glycolysis, glycolysis, and let me write it here. Let me write also a, oh, sorry, that was an AD, ADPs. Let me just rewrite that part right there. Four ADPs. And then you maybe need two phosphate groups, because we're, uh, or we're going to need four phosphate groups, plus four. I'll just call them, sometimes they're right, written like that. But maybe I'll write it like this, four phosphate groups. I'll do four phosphate groups like that. And then once you perform glycolysis, once you perform glycolysis, you have two pyruvates. Two pyruvates. You have two NADHs. NADHs. The NAD has been reduced. It gained a hydrogen, RIG, oil rig. Reduction is gain in electron. But in the biological sense, we think of it gaining the hydrogen, because hydrogen is very non-electronegative, so you're hogging its electrons. You gained its electrons. So two NADHs, and then plus these two ADP, ATPs get used in the investment phase. That's why I kind of wrote them a little separately. So these two get used. So then you're left with two A. D P's. And then these guys essentially get turned into ATPs. So plus four ATPs. I guess we didn't need four. We only needed a net of two phosphate groups, because two jump off of here, and then we need a total of two more to get four jumping on there. But the big picture is you start with glucose, you end up with two pyruvates, you use up two ATPs, you get four ATPs. So you have a net of two ATPs formed. Let me write that very big. Net, what you get out of glycolysis is two ATPs. You get two NADHs that can each later be used in the electron transport chain to produce three ATPs. But you get two NADHs, and you get two pyruvates, which are going to be re-engineered into uh, acetyl-CoA's that are going to be the raw materials for the Krebs cycle. But these are the outputs. These right here are the outputs of glycolysis. So now that we have that big picture, let's actually look at the mechanism, because this is a little bit more daunting when you see it here. But we'll see the same themes that I just talked about. We're starting with the glucose right there. It is a six chain. It's in a circle. It's in a ring. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. I could write it like that just to make it a huge oversimplification. Goes through a few steps. I use an ATP here, so that's, let me do that in a color. We do it in orange whenever I use an ATP. I use one ATP there, I use one ATP there, and just like I told you, they have a slightly different name for it, but this is the phosphoglyceraldehyde right here. They call it glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. It's the exact same molecule. 
But as you can see, just you know, when I drew it very roughly before, you've got one, two, three carbons there. One, two, three carbons there, and it also has a phosphate group on it. The phosphate group's actually attached to the oxygen, but for just for simplification, I draw the phosphate group just like that. And we draw we I showed that right here. This was the phosphoglyceraldehyde right here. This is the actual structure up here, but I think you know sometimes when you look at the structure, you, it's it's easy to miss the big picture. And there are two of these. They kind of say that you know you can go back and forth with this uh, with this other kind of isomer of this. But the important thing is that you have two of these compounds that are now three carbon compounds. Glucose has been split, and now we're re ready to enter the payoff phase. And remember, you have two of these compounds, two of these compounds right here. That's why when they drew this mechanism, they wrote times two right there because the glucose has been split into two of these molecules. So each of the molecules are now going to do this right here. And for each of the glyceraldehyde three phosphates, or PGALs, or phosphoglyceraldehydes, we can look at the mechanism. We can look at the mechanism and say, OK, look here. There's going to be an ADP turning into an ATP there. So this is plus 1 ATP. And then we see it, again, happening here on our way to pyruvate. On our way to pyruvate right there. Then we have another plus 1. ATP. So for each of the P-gals or the phosphoglyceraldehydes that were produced, the phosphoglyceraldehydes that were produced, we're producing two ATPs in the payoff phase. Now there were two of these, so total for one glucose, we're going to produce four ATPs in the payoff phase. So in the payoff phase, four ATPs. In the investment phase, we used one, two ATPs. So total net ATPs directly generated from glycolysis is two ATPs. Right? Four gross produced, but we had to invest two in the investment phase. And then the NADs and the NADHs we see right here. For each phosphoglyceraldehyde or glyceraldehyde three phosphates or PGALs or whatever you want to call them, at this stage right here, you see that we are reducing NAD plus to NADH. So this uh, this happens once for each of these compounds, and obviously the, there are two of these. Glucose got split into two of these guys, so two NADHs, two NADHs are going to be produced, and later these are going to be used in the electron transport chain to to, to actually each produce three ATPs. And then finally, when everything is said and done, we're left with the pyruvates, and it's nice that they, at least that they made it nice and big. We can take a look at what a pyruvate looks like, and just as promised. You know, we can look at all the oxygen bonds and all of that, but it is a three carbon structure. It has a three carbon background bone. So the, the end result is that, that carbon, that the glucose got split in half, it got oxidized, some of the hydrogens got stripped off of it. As you can see, there's only three hydrogens here. We started off with twelve hydrogens in glucose, and now it has it, 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 it's it's carbon is bonding more strongly with oxygen, so it's essentially having its electrons stolen by the oxygens or hogged by the oxygens. So carbon has gotten oxidized in this process. There's going to be more oxidation left to do, and in the process, we were able to generate two net ATPs, two net ATPs, and two NADHs that can later be used to produce ATPs. Anyway, hopefully you found that helpful.